was acceptable in my sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I would like to share some thoughts with you this morning from our colleague. Well, that kind of spurred it on, you might say. Let me read it to you again. I want to say something about the Book of Common Prayer. This thing is a jewel. And all the work that went into this was prayerful and dedicated. And the words of this thing just astound me and, and the men that put this thing together. Now, it wasn't Kramer. He didn't sit down and write the whole thing. Okay? It was a, a team effort. But it's, it's an amazing thing. So our collect of the day says, Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirit to think and do always such things as are right. Let me give you a little background on what spurred me on for this, uh, for this homily. A few weeks ago, uh, Nancy and I were sitting there while the clergy were preparing for communion, and I was just doing this stream of consciousness prayer. You know how you do it. You just kind of let it wander. And it suddenly struck me, uh, and it just filled me with joy. I said, I am so glad that we worship a God who has expectations of us. He expects good of us. He of all good, of all love, of all grace, expects us to walk in his light. And I thought, I'm so glad that we worship a God that expects high things of us. With apologies to Charles Dickens, the title of this homily is Great Expectations. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> We live in a society of diminishing expectations, and this has been going on for decades. Diminishing expectations even to the point that we don't expect our governmental leaders to tell us the truth. We expect they're not going to be honest with us. That's how low our expectations have become in this society. But we are not called to live according to the diminishing expectations of the society. We're called to sanctification which means to be sat in front of the class. <laughs> the reason why I've drilled that into you for years and years is because it's vital to Christianity and to walk in the Christian way to understand that we are called to be set apart, that we're different. When you take those baptismal vows, that changes you, or it should. And we don't walk according to the ways of the world anymore. We are supposed to become exceptional. Robin Williams, uh, God rest his soul, uh, was in the movie Dead Poets Society. Any of you see that? Okay. It was a, a all-male school, and he took them to this display case. You remember? It had all those poets and busts and pictures and all. And he said, gentlemen, do you hear that? you hear what they're saying? They're saying, do not live a life that's ordinary. Be extraordinary. And that's what we're called to do. That's what being sanctified is all about. That's what great expectations are about. For us to walk in exceptionalism, to not be like just the regular run-of-the-day type of individual. No, we're called to be Christian, to live a sanctified life, to live with great expectations. So let's take a look at some of those expectations, a couple of them. The first one covers them all, and you hear it every Sunday on page 69 of the Book of Common Prayer. It's called the Great Commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's take a look at some words there. First of all, it says, uh, and a second is like unto it. What does that mean? Well, it means that the two are inextricably connected. You cannot separate them. You love the Lord your God, and you love your neighbor as yourself, and those are connected. And then he says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Hang? Well, you can take the word depend, and it would be the same meaning that the law and the prophets depend upon the fulfilling of these two commandments. Without these two commandments, the law means nothing, and the prophets are just clanging gongs. They don't mean anything. It's only by walking in these commandments that it gives life to all these things. Expectation number two. You hear this monthly, the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, pages 68 and 69 in the Book of Common Prayer. Now, you've heard me say this before, but when you preach as many years as I preach, you repeat yourself once in a while. And I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. So you won't think I went senile. I said that before. The, of the Ten Commandments, the first four have to do with our relationship with God. 
The next six have to do with our relationship with each other. So we have relationships here in the vertical and in the horizontal. And like the Great Commandments, they cannot be separated. If you think about the Great, uh, the great Commandment, it basically is doing that same juncture as the Ten Commandments did. They cannot be separated. Now, there are people that do separate them. Uh, at the vertical, some, uh, the horizontal, some, there are some people that embrace only the horizontal. Well, we just have to love our neighbor. We have to do good things. We call them humanists. Uh, humanism was pretty hot in the last, uh, last century. It's kind of fizzling out now. And if you look at the logic of it, it kind of falls apart. Uh, because, you see, they reject God. There is no God. We just have to do good things because it's a good thing to do. There's, that's pretty shallow logic. Let's do good things because it's good to do good things. You know, I, I don't get that one. And surprisingly enough, humanism has kind of faded away. It's not the, uh, the taste du jour anymore. Then you have people that embrace only the vertical, and we call them hermit monks. And they're uh, amazingly de devoted to the Lord, but they want nothing to do with people. Well, this falls apart as well because they have pulled these apart. You cannot take the vertical and the horizontal and separate them because the Great Commandment and the Ten Commandments are all about what? Relationships. That's what Christianity is all about. Relationships in the vertical, relationships in the horizontal. To love the Lord with the same intensity that loves us and to love our neighbors as ourselves Pretty intense, isn't it? <clears throat> in my in my experience, Christianity is two things: it's relational and it's intense, or it should be. I pity anyone that is lukewarm in their faith, because there is such vibrancy and walking in the expectations of God. And I'm so glad, so glad that He has expectations of us to be decent people, to treat others with decency, to serve a Lord like that is that's a joy. You know, some people look at Christianity like, well, you, you can't do this, you have to do that. Not to me, it's, I shouldn't do that, and I get to do this. And that's what it's all about, getting to do it, getting to be loving, getting to forgive, getting to show grace, not I have to. No, that's a joy. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, that is intensity. He expects us to return to him the love that he's shown us. And he is the author of all love, all grace, all forgiveness. How could we not? And then to love our neighbors ourselves, that's a toughie, isn't it? And you know, some days I can almost say I got there for today, but then the old Adam says, oh, me first. And there I go, you know. And we live in a society of me first, don't we? And that's one of the problems uh, in this society as far as diminishing expectations. Well, as Christians, we're going to battle the old Adam. And I don't want you leaving here today thinking, well, he just told me how bad I am. No, that's not what this is about at all. If we have engaged willingly the battle with the old Adam. And yeah, he pops up. Sure enough, me first. And then we have to go back to the drawing board. But that, that me first stuff, that doesn't excuse us from picking back up with the game again. And today, speaking of games, I want you to leave this house of worship feeling as though you've been in the locker room and I'm the coach. And this is the, the halftime talk to get you back out in the game tomorrow because the game will start again tomorrow. And we need this, the strengthening of this gathering here. But before you do that, I have an idea. Why don't we have communion, the Holy, Holy Eucharist? I'll tell you a story. Uh, Nancy and I were, this is after I retired from the parish priesthood. However, I was still working in my secular occupation. And I had a tough case. I mean, that thing had me all kinds of legal ramifications. And I walked around with a knot in my stomach, didn't want to go to work. I mean, you've probably been there before, but you, well, I don't want to do that. And I was sitting there with Nancy. Uh, no, we were kneeling at the rail, uh, preparing to receive the Holy Eucharist. Did any of you ever watch Popeye the Sailor Man when you were a kid, uh, uh, the cartoons? Yeah, okay. You remember that there was Popeye, and there was uh, olive oil, and Brutus. And Brutus was always trying to get olive oil, you know. And he was mean and nasty. And he'd get Popeye down, and he'd ground and pound on And then magically, this can of spinach shows up, and he grabs it and squeezes it, and magically the top comes off. When you're a kid, you never think of these things, but I think of them now. Mm -hmm. uh, and he'd you know, chow down on that spinach, and bam, he's up, and he is Superman. And he always won the day, didn't he, because of that spinach. We were kneeling 
at the altar rail. And I, I do believe this was a gift from the Holy Spirit. That image popped into my head. I said, this is my spinach. I can't <laughs> get into spinach. I can get behind that. This is a good thing. And since I had that little uh, flash of whatever it was, uh, Nancy and I invariably, one or the other of us says, let's go get our spinach when it's time to eat it. <laughs> I saw it now, you have to be aware. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a mental picture <laughs> So dearly beloved, let's leave this place of worship today to live the stories of our lives, the story entitled Great Expectations. Amen. 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 Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.